again, my name is Sean. It looks like we have a great, great amount of people tonight. So any questions, you guys, you know, as you're uh, asking all the questions, I'll answer those as many as much as possible. Um, tonight's going to be just kind of like a basic walkthrough of the mock-ups. Um, so at any point, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, we'll cover the quick, the creating the templates adding all of our information and then we'll go over how to create your own mock-up and then we'll go over um, if you already had one in the four how to bring it into the five okay. all right so <clears throat> let's go ahead and just open this up from scratch and we'll go to our mock-up tab. So this is the new layout in the mock-up tab. So the biggest difference now is we have our quick product area. So this is great now. So what we can do, let's go ahead and open up a template. Let's go to our live template three. We'll just do something simple with our manatee basketball design. So with the quick mockups, go ahead and make this a two color real quick. With the quick mockups, all we have to do now is we have to size our design to what we want, but instead of running through all the questions to just throw a pretty much like a sample t-shirt or our design on a t-shirt just to kind of give out as a sample or uh, you know a quick proof, we have the quick product now. So all you have to do is select the folder we want to choose from. So we have our women's and then it will list either the front or back and all the options we want. So from here, these are all the same mockups as the four. They just import it into the five. Um, now, if you have, like I said earlier, if you have any of the other ones, they're not going to, or if you created your own or purchase any, those won't go in to these folders. Um, we'll have to manually move those as of now. Um, so we'll just select the option we want. So we have our women's scoop neck front. And then all I have to do is highlight my design and then just click my t-shirt. And that's just going to quickly throw it up on our t-shirt or whatever we have chosen. Again, the t-shirts are all going to be color changing t-shirts. So I can throw this on. It's going to be a, it's going to start as a standard white, but I can click from any color palette and it'll change that t-shirt for me. Now with some of these t-shirts, it's gonna have a little bit of detail in the t-shirts. These are actual t-shirts that we brought in. So it's gonna have kind of the wrinkles in the detail of the shirt. So if I right click the different colors, so let's go ahead and I'll go to a black t-shirt and I'll right click the white you'll see how it throws a little bit more detail into our shirts. And let's go to white and I'm going to right click the black and you'll see how it gives us that detail in the t-shirt. So depending on the style of t-shirt you want, you can sometimes, let's go ahead and I'll throw it on, let's say one of our burnouts. So I'll do the front, select that. And now with the burnout, you can definitely see kind of the two tone. So what I like to do is, let's say I wanted this as a black t-shirt. When I switch it to a black t-shirt, it just goes straight black. You don't really see that burnout style of the t-shirt. So I left clicked the black. If I right click the white or a lighter color, it will show you the detail in that shirt. So, if, you know, if you're playing around with the mock-ups and your t-shirt, you make it, you know, all black or dark blue and it starts looking like this, just go ahead and right click a lighter color. So I'll right, light, I'll right click the white and then you'll see kind of the pattern and layout of the t-shirt. So same thing with white. If I go white, I need to go to a darker color. So if I right click the black, it will add the rest of the detail in my shirt.
So let's say we had some rhinestones in this design. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to do a quick stone outline. And let's make it just a tad bigger. Stone outline. All right. So now I have my stones in my design. So we'll go ahead and make those crystal. Now if I want those, let's say I have my t-shirt and they want this glitter red and glitter black with the stones around it. So if I want my customer to, to be able to see that this is all rhinestone and this is glitter, I need to switch it to those colors. And now when I go to my mock-up, I can go ahead and select this simulate stones. So same thing, let's go ahead and we'll select the long sleeve front, highlight our design, click our shirt. Now, let's go ahead and make this a little bit gray so you can see this. If I zoom into my stones, you'll see how those are actually real stones now. So this simulate stones button, anytime we have rhinestones and we're creating a mock-up, now we only wanna use this simulate stones for mock-ups we don't want to send this over to our cutter because that's not going to, you know, it's not going to read it correctly. So this, these glitter colors that we're using and this uh, simulate stones button that we're using, this is all for mock-up purposes. Let's add that a little red to make it stand out more. So just like that, your customer is going to see pretty much all the bling in your design. Now, if we want to go a step further, what button are we going to click or add to really make this design pop and show that we have stones in it? Exactly. So we have our add bling button down here on the bottom of our mock-up tab. So it's a little bit different. It used to be kind of just over here on the side. We had our little watermark add bling and simulate stones button. Now we have our, they're just kind of down here instead. So what I can do is just go ahead and select that add bling. And I just kind of click it once or twice around my design. Now to get off of that, you need to either hit escape or click on that button again. If you don't and you start clicking, it's going to keep adding bling around your design. Now you can control these as well. So if I don't want it as you know big coming off, I can make those a little bit smaller. I can move them around. I can kind of control it however I want. And that just adds a little bit more to your design and you know, let your customer know that those are going to be rhinestones. Um, <clears throat> so we had a couple questions come in about the simulate stones button. So all of these, so this, you can kind of see how it's boarded off. We have our quick product. That's the top area up here. Um, so the simulate stones, when that's check marked up here, that just refers to the quick product button. Down here, when we create a full mock-up, that's going to, the simulate stones button right here is going to control that. And down here, this is actually the uh, button if we're not creating a mock-up. Let's say I have my design here and go ahead and make those black. If I come here and I'm just working on my page and I want to see what it looks like with real stones, I can just click this button. Oh. And it should just turn them. Hiller, is that the is that how you are getting the air too? Hmm. All right. Well, I'll definitely check on this one. Usually what that what the simulate stones button will do is completely just change that to the same look we have 
when we click it up here. Um, now to get rid of that look, and we'll see if it works with this button since it's not working on just the regular. If we hold shift and click this button, yeah, it's still giving me the error. That will get rid of that simulate stones look. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so that's just the difference on, you're gonna see like the watermark here and here and here. So that's just, again, if you want the watermark on the quick product, you check it up here. If you want it on the full mock-up, you check it down here. And if you just want it on like the object you have selected, you'll just click down here. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'll show the water, the watermark. Let's go ahead and what we're gonna do next. Any other questions on just a quick product area? Um, the design we're working on right now, that's from uh, the Live Templates Volume 3. So one other thing too with the quick product, let's just say I have my design like this. I throw it on my t-shirt. If I want a quick background for this color or for this mock-up, I can highlight my design, left click this black box up here and that, oh, and you'll see actually I had watermark checked on that one. So you can see when I add the background and over my shirt, that the watermark showed up. So I'm gonna move that real quick. Um, but if we want a background color on that, you just highlight your design, select that black box, it'll put a border around it. And again, you can change that color as well to make it pop. If you wanna trim down the corners on it at all, we have our little shape tool right here underneath our pointer. And I can just select that, bring it down, and that just kind of softens the edges a little bit of it to make it, you know, not as just a square rectangle shape. All right. So, <clears throat> hey, Joseph, how are you tonight? All right, so now we're gonna get into more of creating the product with the order form. Before we do that, we're gonna get into, so we have our logo and our watermark um, check boxes here. So to make those show up in our design, down here, most of it's probably gonna uh, say description until you've added your own kind of information, your company information in here. So to do that, you're gonna left click our pencil. And most of the time you'll see this description kind of set up like this. So when you click on it, you'll have all this information that we now need to fill in. So the description will just be your company name. So you can write the Rhinestone World or TRW um, for short, you know, anything we want. So I'm just gonna write the Rhinestone World so I know that this is the company information that I'm applying to my order form. So most of you are probably only gonna need one. Now, if you have separate businesses, maybe something for the decal, something for shirts, you can import or make as many you know, of these as you want. Um, or if you have you know, someone maybe sharing it, but you have two companies, anything like that, um, you can make as many options or drop downs as you want. But again, most of it is just gonna be all the same. Um, so the watermark text, this is where you pretty much choose what your watermark is gonna say. So if you wanted to say copyright or copyrighted, um, your company's name, your company's website, anything like that, you'll type that in here. So 
I want them, if they see my design, to go to my website to purchase it. So I'm going to put my website information, the rhinestoneworld.com. Um, that way, when they see it, you know, hopefully they'll just go to my website and, you know, purchase it there or see something else that they possibly like too. So the transparency is how much that watermark is going to show up over your design. Our default is 80. Uh, if you want to see it to show up more, you're going to lower that number. So pretty much the lower the transparency, the more you'll see it. So usually I would just stick to 80, um, create a watermark or create, you know, uh, yeah, your water or design with a watermark. If you like the way it looks, keep it here. If you want to show up more, just come in and make that number, you know, 65, save it, apply it again, see how it looks again. If it's too much, you can make it the number higher. Um, so the next is going to be our logo path. So for this, you're just going to upload your logo. I saved one to my desktop earlier today. So I have my rhinestone world logo there. So you just click on the image you want and it will set the path to where to pull that logo. So the business name, again, I have that up here, the rhinestone world. So some of these might repeat. That's okay. Um, watermark text is the same thing as my website. So I can just copy and paste that. Uh, my phone number, email, street and and then my city state and zip now once I in enter all this information if I just hit save and or if I just exit out it's not gonna work correctly so I need to hit add and now you'll see the rhinestone world here. If I want this to the top, or let's say I have an old one that I updated, I can delete those out by simply clicking on those and hitting delete. If I want to move it up, so this is my default, I just select it and put it at the top above the description. Now once I do all that, I need to hit save. If I don't hit save or if I just exit out, all that work I just did, isn't going to be saved and you won't see it in your mock-up options. So we need to hit save. Then when I go to my mock-ups, you'll see the rhinestone world is the default down here. So now we can go ahead and start, we can go into our full products with our order forms. So down here you'll see templates and you'll see order form one, two, three, and four. So we had some requests come in already um, to have some of those old mockups included that were a little bit more than just a quick product, like had your company name and stuff on it, but wasn't actually an order form. Um, so we are, that's something we will add back into the software. Um, so just, you know, hopefully on the next update or patch it will um, be added into that as well. Um, so anyone that came from the four to the five, you know, you've probably seen it before where we used to have like, felt like 20 different uh, mock-ups or mock-up types. So um, these are all gonna be the order form. So we'll get back to um, just at, along with the order forms, but just kind of more of like a simple um, Mock up with your company info and maybe your website or something like that. Um, can you make one that had a youth and adult sizes? Yeah, yeah, that's something we can look into as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I get. Yeah, so for the for the pricing, you're saying. Yeah, that's definitely something I can uh, mention and see if we can get that added as well. All right, so I have one t-shirt, or let's go ahead and say we want this design and we're gonna make it three different ways. So on one, we'll just do the basic vinyl. On another, we'll do 
the glitter. And on this one, we'll size it to a decal. So we have three different options here. Um, so the first one I'll just run through is just doing an order form one product and we're going to use the basic tab. So we have a couple different tabs. You'll see basic and advanced. So I'm going to run you through the basic first and then I'll show you what the advance is going to let us do. So if I want, I can, I don't have any stones in this one, so I don't need to check simulate stones, but I want my logo. I want my watermark in here. So I need to check both of those. So I'm going to highlight my design and I'm just going to select this little button right here, it's Launch Mockup Wizard. So you click that. And the first thing it's gonna do is say Select Product One. So this is just kind of my men's style, just basic easy weed. So I'll select men's and then the style I want. So let's just say men's t-shirt front. Go ahead and select that. Next, it says select your design for the men's um, t-shirt front and click OK. So I can move around, I can move this around to get out of my way, but essentially at this point, I just need to select the design I wanna work with and hit okay. And with the basic mock-up, those are the two questions it's gonna ask you. So everything else is just gonna be generated for us. So this is where your logo is gonna sit. So once you attach your logo, it's gonna automatically populate right here. All the information I typed in, is going to populate there for us. You'll have an image of your design and then also one with the product we're putting it on. So it didn't ask me the shirt price. It didn't ask me what type of kind of pricing breakdown I wanted. It's just going to ask me simply the product and the design that I want. And then it's just going to generate your order form for you. Now I can still come in I can use my live template editor if I want. Close this. So I can come here and hit find text. And if I want to change to $27, I can change that to 22. Same thing down here. We have it down here as well. So you can either select it there or just select the text tool and manually come in 22 and change it like that. So you'll see all the text in this design in your live template editor area. So if you want to quickly edit any of that, you can. Most of it should be already set up for you. It's probably just the price if you do a basic one of what you'll need to change. And same with our background colors. We can always go back and change any of those too. We can still change our shirt color and I can still change the vinyl color on my t-shirt. So I can still completely render, you know, every option on my mock-up that I just had created. Now you'll see when I change the background, you'll actually see my watermark text show up now. So that's just the layer right on top. And actually, let's go ahead. We're going to move that to the front. And now you can see it over my design. So the way these uh, mock-ups, or sorry, the watermarks actually lay in your design is it's almost like a um, power clip or pretty much is a power clip of your logo or your watermark inside of this just kind of shape right here. So it's the same shape as our layout here. So it's just gonna be that wide and it's a power clip of your text going through that. So if you click on that and change the color, it's gonna just make that square, whatever color, and you'll see the watermark show up a little bit more. So we wanna left click this box to make it, does so it doesn't really have that background color. And if we wanna edit the watermark at all, I can click on it and come down here and you'll see edit power clip. So I can select that I can select my design at this point. So if I want to rotate the text and it's white, so let's go ahead and select it and change it to a blue. So we can see, now you can see that text a little bit better. 
So if I want to change the text color, if I want it to be black, I can just change it to a black. And again, if I want to rotate it, I can rotate it. And once I'm done, you'll see this little check mark. I hit OK. And now you'll see how it changed the color and how it's the angle that it's coming through your mock up. So I kind of like the way it's tilted, how we set it up originally, but you might need to come in and change the color. That's the biggest thing. Because when we first saw it, when it was the white background, it's a little bit harder to see. So if we throw it, you know, even a red text, a black, anything dark would look pretty good with this design. Now, if it's on like a dark background and stuff like that, we'll probably want it, you know, more of a lighter text with that default white. But if we want it to show up a little bit more in a white background or a white design, you can edit the power clip and change the color of your, your watermark. Um, the watermark should, so someone asked if the watermark will resize or if you have to make it a certain size, it should fit to that area or it's going to go either by the height or width, whatever it hits first. Um, so it shouldn't have any issue. You know, you, it doesn't matter what size you save the image as it's going to automatically resize it to fit in that area. So Lisa, with that, if you can either just send us an image of how you have it set up or a quick little video, we can look at it that way and just make sure everything's set up correctly. Um, but it sh yeah, it should completely, you know, it doesn't matter what you save it at, it should always just format to fit in this area. Now mine's longer. If it was more of like a box shape, it wouldn't go out as wide. It would just stop kind of, you know, if it was more of like a square shape, it would just kind of sit in the center like this. But because it's a little bit wider it's hitting those uh the width before the height awesome awesome all right so that that's pretty much just our basic um web our basic mock-up so let's go back same design this time we're gonna go ahead and do it advanced and you'll see the options it's going to ask you now. So same, kind of same, the be, same beginning. We're going to select product one. So men's, let's do a long sleeve front. Now it's going to ask for the select product type. So this is where someone was asking if we had the standard shirt size, if we could do like a kid's shirt size. Um, so I think that's something we should be able to add in here for you. Um, so because this is going on a shirt, we need to hit standard shirt size here. Um, if you want to enter the name of the t-shirt, you can. I'm just going to leave it. And then it's going to ask us to select our design. So same thing. Go ahead and highlight your design. If you don't and you hit OK, it's just going to keep asking you to select your design. So just go ahead and highlight what you want. Hit OK. Now it's going to ask us for the price. So now you can see how we're controlling everything before the mockups created rather than going back and editing everything after it's done. Um, it doesn't matter how you set this up, whatever you find easier. Sometimes I find it easier just to do a basic and manually change everything. Um, but if you want to do it beforehand, we can come in here and edit everything through the advanced settings. So the end mockup is going to look the same. The only difference is, is it's going to have your t-shirt price already set up for you and it's going to have the shirt um, layout for us here. So this is what we, when it asks us what type of product type we wanted and we selected the shirt, this is what we selected. Yeah, I'll, I'll change that. Thanks. Thank you, Pillar. All right. So once you, you know, once you run through it and set everything up, the advance pretty much is the same thing, or it's going to give you the same look at the end. It just lets you pick everything beforehand. 
but I can still go here, double click on it, change this to 25 bucks. I can still come here, change my background color, anything like that. So all that will still be the same. It's just gonna ask you everything ahead of time. So now we'll run through one that will, you know, we can actually kind of use or show our customer. Let's say we have this design. We have, we want to show them the men's option, the women's option, and then the decal option. So what we'll do is we're going to do order form three products. We're going to set it through the advanced because if I don't set the advanced, I can't tell it I want the decal settings for my decal it's just going to automatically generate all shirt settings so we're going to go to advance and we're just going to launch the mock-up and again we're going to run through each question so now we're going to run through each one for every design so first one's going to be men's t-shirt front um, select the product for the men's t-shirt front again standard shirt size men's shirt front good select the design that you want on it so just highlight hit ok and the price for my men's is 25 hit ok so now we're going back to select product 2 so you can always look up top here to see what it what we're on so this time we're gonna do women's and we'll do scoop neck front standard shirt Good there select our design this time we're gonna do the glitter option hit ok on um, the glitter option we said 25 for the easy weed so the glitter is gonna be let's just say 30 okay and now select product 3 so this one's gonna be our car decal decal um, we'll do it by color or no we'll do it by size okay and select design three okay the car decal is only 10 I hit okay and now it's gonna have the mock-up for each one so now you can see my decal is gone by size now so there oh, that's one thing we'll have to edit I just realized this didn't change with it so We'll get that fixed. I'm going to write that down right now. All right. So you'll have your different pricing for each shirt here. So that's why we want to do the advanced. Um, it lets me, if I'm doing different, you know, options, if I'm doing all t-shirts, I can pretty much just run through the basic and change everything. But if I want to do the advanced, it's going to let me edit all this and get my actual decal and shirt sizes selected. So this way, once it's on there, I can definitely make that a little bit bigger to pop. I can make it all one color. And that way it's set up a little bit nicer. Here on the background colors, I can make all these black. You'll see the watermark when I do that. But everything else, our logo, all that information will remain there. All right, so any, any questions on creating the mock-up through either the quick product or the full, full mock-up wizard? So what we're going to do now is actually add a product to our design or to our mock-up uh, tab. So we'll have our folders here. We're going to add it so we have our own mock-up here. So what we want to do, we had a request for one of the Raglan shirts. So I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to go ahead and just copy image. Now, if you're purchasing from like Sandmore, a lot of those um, t-shirt companies, 
you can actually go to their sites and download their images. So they're like high resolution, really nice looking t-shirts and use those in your mockups as well. I just went to Google for this one, but if you're purchasing from one of those sites, um, you should be able to download like nice clean images from there. So I'm just gonna paste, I'm just gonna bring in my shirt. So <clears throat> in our mockup creator, we have a couple different options. We have our auto boundary and our manual manual boundary tracer. So every time I'm bringing in an object, the first thing I want to try to do is create an auto boundary. So what it's doing is trying to find the outside of our object, this case, the t-shirt and make a copy or outline of it. So you can see this one is just going around kind of where my blue area is. So that doesn't help me at all because it doesn't, you know, take in the rest of my t-shirt. So on this case, what I'm going to have to do is manually trace the outside of my t-shirt. So we have our B spline right here. Just go ahead and click that and just pick a point at the top to start. Now I recommend going in, you'll see how these are all set to 0 0.02. What that's doing is you can see how these edges look really kind of pixelated. So we're going to go to the inside just a little bit. So we try to cut out some of that pixelation. So we don't have to zoom in that much unless it's easier, but I'm just left clicking and it's adding those, those boxes and those are called our nodes. So it's leaving nodes behind and I'm just left clicking again, just going around the outside. If I, mess up at all don't worry we can go back and edit all these little nodes that we're leaving behind so if something goes off don't worry about it we'll go back and fix fix everything at the end because once i you know i want to connect this before i go back and edit any of it so i'm just going through now the more nodes you the more times you left click the more nodes you'll leave behind and usually that leads to more detail but on a lot of these, I don't need, you know, a crazy amount of detail. So I'm going through pretty quickly. And we're almost done. So you guys can see when I'm running out of room, like here, I need to go up. So if you just raise your mouse up past kind of the work, where your ruler is or your grid is up here, it will move the page for you. So now what I've done is pretty much made an outline of my t-shirt. Um, so Kristen, um, I, there isn't a way to move the mockups from the four to the five man or automatically yet, but I will show you in a minute how to do that manually. Now it is one of the fixes we're going to work on. Um, so you don't necessarily, um, you know, if what I said earlier, if there was something you need right away, I would do it how I'm going to show you next. If you can wait on it, you know, we're going to try to fix it all at once. So, um, I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that next though. So what we've done is just created a, you know, an auto boundary or we did a manual boundary around our design. So this is all we're looking for. Just a trace to the outside. Uh, you know, most of the time, if it's a one color object or shirt, it usually traces it pretty well. If it has multiple colors or a lot of like shadows, that's where it's going to have trouble with the auto tracer. Now, the next step is we have after we get through the tracer, we have either cut out um, color change mockup or cut out image mockup. So there's, because we have like two different colors in this, um, this t-shirt, we cannot make this a color changing t-shirt. And because it had, if it was an all white t-shirt, we can make it a color changing mockup. So any, anything that we start as just plain white, we can turn into a color changing mockup. If it has any type of color to it, 
um, you know, all if this was all blue, we'd still have to use the color, um, the cutout image mockup. So if, to make it those color change like our mockups that are preloaded, it has to start as a white product. And then you can use the color changing effect. If not, you need to just use the cutout image. So we have our two items. I'm just going to highlight to make sure I have selected both because if I go to my wireframe, you can see how this actually has like a white box around it. So if I go back this t-shirt, it has this white box around the outside of it and I can't get rid of that without, you know, moving everything or getting rid of my t-shirt. So once we have that set up, we're going to highlight everything so you can see how the these black boxes go around my entire object. So what I don't want to do is just do that because right now all I have selected is just that top layer I just made. So I need to select my entire design. So that's why you'll see me almost grab to the outside, like way out here, just to ensure that I have everything selected. Because when we take these images from Google, they have these white boxes around them. But when you throw it on a white background, you don't see those boxes. So if for some reason you, you know, you make everything, you highlight like this and it doesn't work, just make sure there's not a big box around. And if there is highlight everything and then hit your cutout image mockup. So you click that. Now, if I go to my wireframe, you don't see that box around it. So that's what we're looking for. This, is our new mock-up image. So now this is a full t-shirt. This is most likely going to be for an adult. So my design width is going to be my average design that's going to go on these, you know, t-shirts. So most times like an eight inch or a little bit bigger, maybe nine will go on these adult t-shirts. So anywhere from like eight and a half to probably 10, I would set these design widths for your t-shirts. So let's just say eight and a half. And I'm going to hit create design placement. Now it's going to throw up this box. Um, if you look up top here, the height and width of it is only three and a half by three inches. That doesn't correlate to our eight or that doesn't mean that our eight and a half is messed up here. This box, I can make this a little bit smaller to fit into our t-shirt. Now all this box represents, it doesn't matter the size up here. It's going to know, that our design width is eight and a half inches. So I'll show you what that, what it's really setting up. Um, but essentially what we want to do is once we add our design or hit create design placement, we just want to size that box to fit in our design area. And this is going to be the area where our t-shirt our design is going to lay on it. So the next one is adding it to our folder. So I can click add new folder if I want create my folder name and hit OK, or I can select a pre-existing folder. So I know this is going to be in men's. I don't need another folder for this shirt. So I'm going to select men's and I'm going to name this blue sleeve raglan. I'm going to highlight my design and I'm going to hit save custom product. It's kind of do like a little blink and it will say it's been saved. So now I can go to my mockups. We have our design here. Let's go ahead and go to men's. And now you'll see blue sleeve raglan front and a little preview of the t-shirt we just have here. So this is what this is where that eight and a half inches gets important when we set it here in the mockup creator. So right now my design right here is almost 10 inches wide. So if I want that to show up nicely on my new mock-up, I need to get that closer to eight and a half or just know that when I click this, it's going to look a little bit big on my t-shirt because that's set to almost 10 inches. And we told it this area right here was eight and a half. So if I forget that I can just come in, highlight my design over it, resize it to kind of fit in there a little bit nicer. So that's not, you know, it's not the worst thing, but same thing if I did it with my decal size, well, this is set to five. So it's going to look really small on my new T on my mock-up. So if I forget, no problem. I just highlight, make it a little bit bigger, resize, and I'm good. Or I just 
hit control undo, go back, make this eight and a half, select my design, and then it fits perfectly without having to edit. So that's what we're setting when we say eight and a half here, our design width. If I was doing this for, um, you know, let's say I brought in a truck, the back of a truck's window so I can put a decal on it. If I size that to eight and a half and all my decals are five, it's gonna look small on that image. So we just wanna correlate pretty much, this is, you know, eight and a half for a, a normal size, you know, adult t-shirt. If I know this is gonna go on XLs or X, you know, double X, maybe I'll make my design width closer to 10 to 12 inches instead. So any questions on adding your own mockups? And it's the same process, whatever object we're using. So if I came here and searched um, metal tumbler, and I can pretty much select anyone I want. So let's say I have this black one here. Um, let's go to Let's go down here actually. So it actually gives us the image. This is an Arctic one, so it's gonna have their logo in it, but I can go to copy image, bring it to my new one here. All right, and let's try the create auto boundary. So now that worked pretty, that worked really well. You can see the auto boundary found the edge is really nice. So when it does that, all I have to do, cut out image, my design width, you know, these tumblers are small. I maybe have, you know, three, three and a half inches to play with. So I'm gonna type three and a half, create design placement. It's a lot bigger than my product, no problem. I'm still gonna just shrink that down to fit right there. Come here. This is kind of where my accessories are, or I could create a new folder. Type in Arctic, All right, let's do silver arctic mug highlight save custom product it'll blink and say it's been saved so now i can go back to my design here page one so now my design here is eight and a half inches so what's going to happen when i set it on this arctic mug that i just created So if I don't resize this at eight and a half and I click this mug, it's going to be a lot bigger than our mug because we told it that we need three and a half inches to be able to fit our design on here. So that's why sometimes on these mock-ups, if you're using something small like this and it's a lot bigger, it's just because we need to resize this so that, you know, if I make this three and do the same thing, it goes on that mug without me having to edit it or, you know, coming in and be like, oh, let's just make it a little bit bigger. But other than that, that's our, you know, that's why it's showing up either really big or really small in certain objects. We have to make sure our design that we're putting on there kind of matches the width of what our object normally, like the objects or the product would normally be on that object. But yeah, once they're on there, you can totally change the color scheme and anything like that. So if you need to change any of that, you don't have to go back. It's just more of that resizing. All right. So the last thing we'll cover is if you had any mock-ups from the four, so what I did is I went to this, uh, I went to my documents and then you'll see the design wizard folder there. Um, so if you go to mockups, you'll see all these folders already in here. So the wizard, this one right here is controls our new 5.0. So if you go to the mockups here, or sorry, if you go to any of these other tabs here, these are from the four. So if you have any products from the four, you'll see that those are all gonna be located in here. So here's all my custom designs I've created that were in the four. So all my different t-shirts, my hats, everything like that. So 
essentially what you what we need to do is let's say I want this blue Under Armour t-shirt well I'm just gonna bring that into Corel but because I'm pulling it from my mock-up area it's already done so the cutout everything we did here where we had to do the tracer and the cutout that's already done for us so the only thing we need to do now is recreate our design placement so with this one well three and a half actually works good because it was supposed to be like a um, chest the um, chest mock-up so all I'm doing is just importing my old one resizing my design placement are recreating that and then I can just save this right back into it so men's blue under armor polo now this is what I meant too. this is a blue polo so I can't make this a color changing mock-up so once I hit save and I go to my mock-ups now say I have my design I'm gonna go to mock-ups go ahead and make this just all one color mock-ups men's blue Under Armour polo front it's gonna save that again we said three and a half so let's make it a little bit smaller and that will throw it right on there for me now if I try to change the color you can notice that it's not going to do anything on this design all right so if it's not if you don't set it up as a color changing mock-up um, or like if it's not a white image it's not going to work as a color changing mock-up but yeah for your old ones that's going to be the process now so you're going to go we'll start over your documents find your trw design wizard folder go to mock-ups ignore the wizard folder because that's going to be for your five so go to your products these are all going to be regular you know ready to go they've already been cut out so you just select the one you want. Delete your red box. Resize your design width. Place that wherever you want it. Add it to the folder, rename it, and then save. So we are trying to work on a fix that will kind of import all your other ones. But in the meantime, if you need one, don't feel like you have to go, you know, find it or recreate it from the beginning. You know, all these steps are done for you. You just pretty much have to put a new design placement and resave it. So that's going to that's going to be your fix right now, but we are working on, you know, trying to be able to just a quick import from all your old into your new Alrighty. Well, that pretty much wraps up tonight's webinar. Did you guys have any other questions on the mock-ups that I missed or that we need to see again? Um, is there any place to put in a custom like number? Um, so a custom number, like on the back of a t-shirt kind of thing. On the order form? Yeah, so did I, yeah, so you would put like your phone number? Is that what you're referring to? On the order form, you can put a custom, your, your phone number. Um, no, like they have the number 23. Yeah, so on that one, what we do is we have the mock-ups. And on each of these, like the men, let's go here to design here. And let's say we had our t-shirt like this. 
in our men's man C basketball. And on the back, they had the number 23. So if I want to show a customer that, So let's go ahead and make that gray too. So what I can do for that is if I do an order form one product or order form two product, sorry, we can go ahead, we'll do a basic. And so we're just gonna launch. And we'll do men's. So the first one we'll do is the front. So we have our men's t-shirt front, select the design, hit okay. And then the next, we want the same, but the back, and then we want the number, hit okay. And that way it would show the front and back of our design. Oh, gotcha, because it's showing both. Okay. Yeah, so I know we can definitely, yeah, we can add that so it just has an area where you can do front and back without it showing two orders. And again, anything on here can be removed, so I could just highlight that area and delete it out and then even move that kind of in the middle like that. So we can edit these around, oops, however we'd like. Oh, okay, so you want you want a number, I got you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So what he was saying is um, if we had an area maybe that they could just fill in, instead of showing, you know, if this is a example, they could order the size and then the number that they wanted on the back. I got you, no problem. Yeah, so we don't have anything right now, but we can always edit those. Um, so let me talk with Matt and um, I'm writing those down now. All right. Um, um, you, if you put two red boxes, it's going to send the design to both of them. All right. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up tonight's webinar. Um, thank you guys all for attending. Um, so tomorrow I have another webinar that's going to be one of the premiums. We're going to be doing some tur um, more tournament style t-shirts um, using the text effects to build those. Um, and then later Matt will have the weekly kind of live where we do the giveaway for the cameos. I know we got some designs or fonts coming out as well. Um, and then Thursday... I believe he has a webinar coming out too, um, just designing. I think he put up a little preview on our Facebook page if you guys want to check that out. But um, one of the designs you'll be building with Matt on Thursday. All right, guys. Um, so one other question, the, where are the patterns? So the patterns will be right in your Docker area. So you'll see the TRW magic patterns. And then those will just show up right here on your side. And under the edit tab, you can actually see those as well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, any other questions, um, you can always give us a call at 941-755-1696. Shoot us an email at info at the Rhinestone World. Um, just want to thank you guys all again for being patient with us the last couple weeks um, with all the shows going on 
and the release of the five. I know the call center has been swamped. Um, I know they've gotten not completely, but very, uh, you know, caught up to the point where they're coming and the messages are coming in the same day. I know for the first day or so they're trying to play catch up on everything. Um, so just want to thank you guys for all that. Um, if you guys have any trouble reaching out, um, always just, um, you can try us on Facebook too. I know with Matt, with the lives, he's been taking a lot of notes too and, you know, getting us to call those people back the next day and stuff. So, um, hopefully in the next week we should be all caught up and back to kind of more of the, you know, same day answers very quickly and stuff like that. But, um, just want to thank you guys again. And, uh, um, any other webinar suggestions? We had one come in the beginning. Anything like that, we're always um, listening to. So if you guys want to see anything or if we haven't covered anything in a while, just let us know and we'll be happy to do any of these webinars to kind of go over those topics too. All right. But otherwise, um, have a great night. Uh, we'll see you probably a lot of you guys tomorrow night too. Um, those again, those are going to be some tournament style t shirts. So we'll go over some tricks and stuff like that. Talk about pressing. Um, what you know how to set up on site and stuff like that too so we'll go a little bit more in depth than just designing um, but that will be our main focus of creating those um, tournament style t-shirts all right guys have a great night